Okay, I've had a lot of people ask me about the uh, coin ring making process. So we're gonna do some short tutorials. First of all, my die. This will fit the quarter right there. I put the quarter in. Next step, to punch. And I will take that over to the anvil and I'll be back. Okay, so I have my coin in the die. And remember, the coin fits inside of this because you can make different size, you can do different size coins inside this. So there's a, uh, I don't know what you would call this, but it, it fits and it will let the quarter sit solid. So I put the cap back on. Then I go back and I get a punch. This is a half inch punch. And it's pretty well lubed. I put it in and then I go punch it out. I'll be back. Okay, the next step, well, you can see I've got the hole punched right in the center. The next step is to heat this quarter up, quench it, and then we'll start the folding process. It's already starting to turn. You got to get this baby red hot. That softens the metal. So you can start folding it into the ring shape. And you have to also decide which side you want out. Which side do you want to be on the, the face of the ring and which is going to be on the inside. We're almost there. She, she's getting hot. All right, I think we're there. So you quench it. You bring it out. And look how black it's turned. All right, next step. Dry it off. Determine which side you want to show. And I think... I'm going to go with the, what's, what's actually the face of the quarter. But what you want to do, there can be little pieces of metal. So you get your deburring tool and you start cleaning. See if I can do this so you can see it. Anyway, that gets uh, those edges off there. Okay, next... So I get my folding die, and you can see it's various degrees. I think they're like 17 degrees, but they're various sizes. Find the one that's going to fit. And let's see. I think right there is what we're going to use. Now, the next step, you've got, got it in your die. You're going to get a ball bearing. You set it on top. Now, remember, this coin is soft. So I go over, put this back, put my ball bearing in, and I do a press. Get the ball bearing out and pop out the coin. And as you can see, it's got the cone shape. Now you just keep from here, you go to the, the next smallest size. Or if it will fit your ring stretcher, 
you put it on the ring stretcher like that and you can start although i don't think you can see the top of the ring stretcher okay it's on the ring stretcher you got to fold these sides all the way up against the cone. So here's what's going on. You work it down as far as you can. Okay, that's about as far as we can go with that. And you'll see that it's getting smaller. It's starting to close in. I don't know. I hope it's in focus. But anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to anneal it again and then put it back in my press and try and get the sides folded evenly so it looks like a ring and then we'll polish it. I'll be back. All right, let's anneal this thing again. doesn't take a long time it'll get it'll get very hot again now I'm not a pro at this so you know you can go on YouTube and there's a lot of guys that have been doing this for a long time We're almost there. All right, I think we're there. So, let's cool it off. Look how quick after dunking that, you can pick that ring up. It's crazy. All right, let's dry it off. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in Teflon tape. And the reason is because you don't want your your dye to mar the uh, coin. So this Teflon tape will protect it. I just go around a couple, three times, and that's it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the right size to put it in again. That's a little much, too big, right there. So the reed part of the coin, we're gonna bring down. So let's do that right now. Okay, line it up. Get it straight on there. And bring it down. Okay, right now, that coin actually looks even to me. I can see it through the tape. So, but I'm going to bring the cut side down just a little bit. Not much. Sometimes those get stuck in there and you just pop it up. No biggie. All right, let's unwrap this rascal and see what we got. You get all that Teflon tape off and you look at it and you look, is it, you know, is it perfectly circular? And I think this one is. So now I could, I could, size it and say, okay, I want to go a size bigger or a size smaller. But this is just demonstration, so we're going to stick with this. So the next thing would be that we want to start polishing this ring. And what we're going to use is some, for now, we're going to use some steel wool. This is 4 rot. So this is, uh, you just start working it, and I'll show you the difference. Well, right now, if you look, it's just black. So let's, let's work on it a little bit. I mean, I use my Dremel tool for this. I use my hand drill. 
Uh, I've got some buffing pads. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it, but it just depends on how much of that, uh, the darkening you want to take off of this. I was using uh, liver of sulfur, and it does the same thing. It makes it black, but when you torch it and heat it, it does the same thing anyway. So, lately I've just been using that. The ring I gave, I think the rings I gave Claire, Emily, and Todd, and Robert, were just uh, from the torch. Because all you want to do is you want to get the highlights. And that, and that's, steel wool does a good job of it. But if, if I need more, I will get my, my Dremel or I've got a cleaning rag that actually works real good too. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can see. I'm not sure where I have to be for focus on this. But the highlights are starting to show. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, that's, that's the process of doing this. So, see you next time.